Welcome back to another episode of the Moxie Tarot Podcast. It's Michelle here, and I am so excited to be back. It is 2023, and I hope you had a fantastic holiday, however you choose to celebrate. The project that took me away from the podcast for, gosh, a couple months is completed, and I am returning to the podcast ready to go and refreshed. I have a quick public service announcement for you before we get started with this week's episode, which is going to be about sharing with you an introspection reading for the new year that you can do for yourself. And we will also go through a card for each astrological sign for the week. Just a quick mini reading for each of the astrological signs. So the public service announcement is that you should get your flu shot. I don't care how old you are, you should get your flu shot. I am on day 14 and I still can't take a shower without having to sit down and rest when I'm finished. Um, I get one every single year and this year I decided I was going to wait till my regular appointment in January and clearly that was a huge mistake. So if you have not gotten yours, please get one. It's a really bad one this year, and you just don't want to be that sick. So as we head into another new year, we are barraged with new year, new you. Aren't you wonderful? What are you going to do to change your life this year? And the resolution thing too, right? What's your resolution going to be? What are you going to change about yourself this year? I personally don't make resolutions. But if you do, and if you beat yourself up when you inevitably stop making it to the gym, or fall, you know, you fall off the diet, or you... Um, miss a day of whatever it is that you have committed to doing every single day. I want you to consider reframing the idea of resolutions and shift that into possibilities. This reading is an opportunity to reflect on last year a little bit and then get in touch with what could potentially be coming up for you in this new year and how you can use this information in a way that will help you take a critical look at where you are, help you take a critical look at where you want to be, and help you identify, hopefully, somewhat of a pathway for getting there. This reading is for those of you who are looking for personal growth. You are looking for some suggestions about where you might want to move your life for maybe where your life is going and giving you a heads up in case you don't want to go in that direction. Okay, so what I'm going to do is just go through the questions with you and then I'll put the reading up on the show notes so you can just look at it. You can grab it for yourself. Okay, all right. So this reading I am calling the introspection reading for the new year. There are 11 questions. Question number one or card number one. Of all of the lessons I have learned in the past year, which one lesson do I most need to carry forward into the new year? This question is designed to help you reflect on what you've learned, what you still need to learn, and 
what you can do to take those life lessons and implement them. Question number two. Of all the wisdom I gained in the last year, what most needs to be carried forward into the new year? This question is different from the first in that this is more about the wisdom that you gained through the lessons that you learned (laughs) this year. So what wisdom that you have developed in this past year would be appropriate for you to carry forward into the new year? Have you finally come to realize that X, Y, or Z, right? Have you realized the wisdom of not forcing your 16-year-old son to keep his room sparkling clean? You know, it's, it's, it's those types of things on a much, much, much deeper, more personal level. But yeah, we're looking for wisdom. We're looking for those things that it's like, holy moly, okay, I don't know. For me, when I did this reading, the card that came up was the Empress. And I interpreted that to be, I have gained the wisdom of the Empress in that I am learning to let nature take its course a little bit more than forcing something to happen. The Empress is all about being ready to give birth, about being in this very fertile, lush, uh, welcoming and giving environment. And for me, what I want to carry forward from this is I have inside me a knowing, a wisdom that I have gained in the past year around the the ideas of the Empress card. So in the first question, we're looking for more hard knocks, right? Lessons learned. I learned that next year I'll get a flu shot, that type of thing. And then the wisdom, the question, the second question is really about more what's inside. What have you learned on a soul level? What have you learned on a spiritual level that you most want to carry forward into the new year? Question number three, how should I use this new wisdom to inform my new year, right? What what have I learned and how should I use it to make my life better, to move my life in the direction that I want it to go in the next year? For questions number four, five, six, and seven, you can phrase them in two different ways and you'll come up with two very, very different sets of information. If you're looking at hoping to get some information about how, you know, this next year is going to be looking for you, then you may want to ask the questions. What is my personal life likely to look like in 2023 as of this moment? What will my vocational or my career life look like in 2023 based on how things are this moment? What will my spiritual life look like? What will my creative life look like? So those questions phrased that way are predictive. They are questions that you can ask that hopefully will give you some intuitive feel for what's coming up in those areas. You can also 
phrase the questions in a way that really brings even more introspection into the reading. And that is by phrasing them, how do I want my personal life to look in 2023? How do I want my career life to look? How do I want my spiritual life? How do I want my creative life to look? And in this instance, we're asking the cards to tap into maybe some things that are subliminally buried within us and using the cards as a starting point for an exploration of the life that you want to create going forward. Question number eight, in what way is growth available to me this year? However you define growth. Number nine, what can I do to facilitate this growth? What can I do to facilitate moving in this direction? Number 10, what challenges do I need to look out for? And number 11, what card can I call on for guidance? So as you can see, this is not your typical forward-looking year review type of spread. This one is far more personal. This one is far more um, based on what's going on in your heart, in your soul, um, in your mind <laughs> than it is what's going on in the, the material world. So if you're looking for this type of reading to help you kind of see where you've been and see where you can go and how you can get there, I recommend this reading. All right, let's get into the reading for each of the astrological signs. We will be pulling one card for each sign and this reading, mini reading, will be for today, January 5th through January 12th. And because we are in January, we are going to start with Capricorn. Capricorn is likely to have a very lovely week. The Ten of Cups, pardon me, my cat is playing. Missy, Missy, I don't have to take that away from you. I'm sorry. I know. I'll give it back later, okay? I know. I know. I'm sorry. All right. The Ten of Cups is a card of deep satisfaction. A card that essentially illustrates all is right in the world at this moment. So if you are a Capricorn, keep an eye out for some nice things to happen this week. Probably related to maybe someone doing something nice for you or you doing something nice for someone else that feels really good because we are talking about cups. You know, we're talking about feelings and emotions. Um, intuition as well could be a part of that. So this week, just open yourself up to sort of the, the loveliness <laughs> that the universe has for you this week. Aquarius. Aquarius, you have pulled the Hermit card for this week. And the Hermit card is simply suggesting that you take some time to rest. You take some time to step away from the fray and consider what's important to you as opposed to being so concerned with what's important to everyone else. We can't 
sometimes move forward if we don't have our batteries charged in a way that we can stay energetic, where we can stay motivated. And this week, the cards are suggesting that you just don't worry about moving forward this week. Rather than pushing forward, maybe look inside. Pisces. Pisces pulled the chariot. So you have a week coming up of moving something forward. It could be getting a project done. It could be leading some sort of charge for a better this or a better that kind of, you know, riding into the fray so you can save the day type of thing. So if you have projects that maybe are stalled out a little bit, this card is a suggestion that this is a good time for you to kickstart that process. And if you are not in a project right now, if there's nothing that you are trying to move forward, this card is suggesting to you that something may be coming up for you that will either bring the chariot energy to you or put you in the position of displaying that chariot energy. Aries got temperance this week. Temperance is all about balancing everything out. If we look at the word temperance and we break that down into temper, to have something in a state of perfect balance, of perfect just being. So for you, Aries, this card could mean a couple different things. It could be a suggestion to you that it is time for you to seek out a little bit of your own internal temperance. Maybe you are feeling particularly um, frustrated with a situation or maybe you are feeling like something's not moving along quickly enough. Temperance is just a reminder that says all things in good time. We have to maintain or it's good to maintain this certain level of balance, this certain level of homeostasis right? A, a temperate situation. It's not too crazy and it's not too dull. So if there is some chaos around you this week, Aries, remember temperance is the card that has come up for you. Do a little breathing, do a little stepping away, and work to cultivate that sense of temperance. Taurus. Taurus has the Empress this week. The Empress is the card of fertility. It is the card of abundance. It is um, kind of this deeply earthy, sensual, not sexual so much, but sensual, um, life-giving force. So this card coming up for the Taurus this week is a reminder to us that we have seeds of possibility within us. We can create something. We can set a seed and watch it grow. And so this card is asking us how we want to demonstrate that this week. How does that fit into our lives? This is a good card to perhaps even meditate on. Um, this is a card that you would want to see perhaps come up in the reading that we just talked about because it's such, it's just such a lovely card of future and possibility and fertility and abundance. 
So what I see for the Taurus this week is a card or a time of either reveling in all that surrounds you that makes you feel like the Empress, right? Reveling in the home that you have created because we know Taurus likes to have their space feel good. Um, you know, it could be a reminder that you can be creative and learn something new and, and create something new. Gemini. Well, Gemini, this is potentially not the best week for you. We have the Three of Swords, and the Three of Swords is a card of some sort of betrayal. There's the possibility that there's something that you're doing to betray yourself, to not be true to yourself this week. And then there's also the possibility that someone in your orbit is potentially not being honest with you, who has or is considering betraying you in some way, shape, or form. Please look at it from both perspectives. I find that more often than not, when the Three of Swords comes up, it comes up in relationship to the person for whom the reading is being done, not necessarily pointing at someone who's going to be betraying us. So yes, that is a possibility. That is one of the potential meanings of this card. But just take a look at what's going on in yourself. You know, take a look at maybe what you bailed on that you just really wanted to finish. And you, you, you betrayed yourself because you did not give yourself the grace to come back to the project and finish it or um, to give yourself the grace to not beat yourself up for not eating well over the holidays, that type of thing. So take a look inside before you start looking at other people this week and um, do a little bit of self-care. Cancer. Knight of Pentacles. Knight of Pentacles is kind of a boring card. Um, it's a very steady and true and dependable card, right? Potentially pointing at something financial for you or something in the very practical world. Um, like you need to look at your bank account or um, there's some sort of adulting perhaps that needs to be done around your finances. So take a look at what's going on with that this week. Leo, Queen of Cups. The Queen of Cups is the queen of intuition the queen of emotion, the, the queen of non-material things. The energy that she brings is this energy of mm, sort of a, an open, creative, possibility-laden energy likely in relationship to feelings or something along those lines. Potentially a suggestion that you embody or consider embodying this Queen of Cups energy this week. Actually, the same thing with the Knight of Pentacles, right? Sorry to go back to that, but whenever we have a court card come up in a reading, we can look at it from the perspective of, is that a suggestion that we should be embodying that type of energy or is it a suggestion that maybe we already are? So the Queen of Cups energy is just this very chill, very um, kind of hippy-dippy energy. <laughs> 
And um, it's actually just a, a, a nice card to have as the card of the week. Sort of a... Um, similar, to, in my mind, to the Temperance card. Not necessarily similar in the meaning of the card itself, but similar in that it's just a nice, gentle card of sort of being in the moment with what is so and not pushing in any one direction, one way or the other. So if you can, take some time this week and enjoy being in that Queen of Cups energy. Virgo, Page of Cups. Page of Cups is the card about new possibility. Very often, new creative things could be a new creative venture, could be um, something with youthful energy around creativity. So, potentially again, a suggestion that this week you embody that Page of Cups energy. This week, take a look at, you know, what you've been wanting to do. Take a look at maybe where you have been feeling creative, but have been stifling yourself. Open yourself up to cultivating some of that Page of Cups energy, and you should find it quite rewarding. Libra, the Judgment card. Judgment card is a card of judging where things are, how things are going. Um, are we where we want to be? Are we proud of where we are? Have we done what we said we would do and what we um, really want to do? One could, I suppose, look at this card from a more religious perspective where um, this is a week where something will be judged, where there is something in your life that, um, that's going to be deemed good or bad. Again, I almost always, especially with cards like Judgment, ask people to look inside we are our own harshest critics. Do not spend the week judging yourself. Do not spend the week picking yourself apart. Spend the week, if you are in this judgment zone, looking at things clearly, looking at things dispassionately. And then, when this week is over and the judgy energy is gone, Take a look at it and see if there's something that you need to learn, if there's something that you need to change. All right, Scorpio, Justice. Justice card is pretty much what it sounds like. Justice in some form could mean literal justice, could mean figurative justice. But there is something going on in your orbit that is kind of being decided, um, that's being looked at from the perspective of, is it fair? Could be something in the legal realm. Um, could be something, something in like the business or in the, in the mental arena, in the arena of thoughts and ideas. The card could be asking you to take a look at, is there a way, is there something going on in your life right now that is unjust? If you decide that's yes, then you need to look at, is it unjust, am I being victimized, or is it unjust, am I victimizing someone else? Very important distinction there, right? Um, so again, you know, look at it from a personal perspective. Is there somewhere in my life that justice needs to be meted out? 
is there something that I need to do that has been unjust that I need to correct? Or potentially, again, like the legal system, um, you know, something in life or in society that either doesn't seem fair right now or is something that is at least in conversation right now, that something in your orbit needs to have some sense of justice around it for it to have in order to gain the understanding that we need. And then lastly, Sagittarius. Well, Sagittarius, I'm sorry, but you have the Eight of Swords this week. Eight of Swords is a card of feeling trapped, of feeling stuck, but being the holder of the keys that keep you stuck. When the Eight of Cups comes up, it, I'm sorry, when the Eight of Swords comes up, it often suggests that there's something internal, there's some internal turmoil that you can't let go of, that you can't change, that there's something impeding you from doing what you need to do in order to escape from this feeling of being essentially, you know, tied up and blindfolded among eight really, really, really sharp swords. So this week, take a look at maybe where you're feeling stuck, maybe do some brainstorming about possibilities, about possible solutions, because the solution is there. You just need to be able to identify it in order to implement it. So yes, Sagittarius this week could be not a great feeling one, but know that you have the power to free yourself from whatever it is that is weighing you down right now. All right, that is the episode for this week. I hope everyone has a wonderful rest of the week and I'll look forward to talking to you next week. Take care.